Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. We come to a very short chapter, only six verses in Isaiah. But it's an important chapter because in the Jewish understanding, this is about the Messiah's reign. In fact, they celebrate this annually at the Feast of Tabernacles. Traditionally, when the temple stood, there was a long prophetic act that would be performed during the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles to honor the prophecy contained within this this chapter. The Jews themselves considered this to be a messianic passage. They considered it to be about the day of the Lord, to be about the the Messianic kingdom. And so let's read now Isaiah chapter 12. In that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense, and he has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. And so the the verse that is celebrated is verse 3, but let's start at the beginning. Verse 1, in that day, now this is speaking about the day of the Lord. Messiah is in view throughout the whole chapter. In that day, in that season, you will say, I will praise you, Lord, Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. So this speaks of a time when the Lord's anger towards Israel has been lifted. Uh, The Lord is comforting Israel. The Lord's favor is once again resting on the Jewish people, and they're responding with praise. They are recognizing that Yahweh has indeed relented from his fierce anger and judgment and begun to bless the Jewish people once again. And so God is proclaimed to be the Savior of Israel. Verse 2, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Now what that literally says is Yahweh, Yahweh is my strength and my defense. He has become my Yeshua. Yeshua is another name for Jesus, or a Hebraic name for Jesus. So Yahweh has become my salvation. Yeshua means the Lord saves, Yahweh saves. So Yahweh has become the Lord saves, the Messiah. He has become the fulfillment of the prophetic promises contained within this. This speaks of that season. And then we come to this verse 3, concerning prophetic wells of salvation that were celebrated by the Jews annually at the at the temple period. And to some degrees, even to this day. Verse 3, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Now, this is a prophetic decree. Now, I want to read to you a paragraph, a long paragraph, from Adam Clark's commentary concerning this verse. The Jews themselves seem to have applied it to the times of the Messiah. On the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, they fetched water in a golden pitcher from the fountain of Shiloh, springing up at the foot of Mount Zion without the city. They brought it through the water gate into the temple and poured it, mixed with wine, on the sacrifice as it lay upon the altar with great rejoicing. They seem to have taken up this custom, for it is not ordained in the law of Moses as an emblem of future blessing. In allusion to this passage of Isaiah, they have responded and said, You shall draw waters with joy from the fountains of salvation. Expressions that can hardly be understood of any benefit afforded by the Mosaic dispensation. Our Savior applied the ceremony and the intention of it to himself and the effusion of the Holy Spirit promised and to be given by him. 
The sense of the Jews in this matter is plainly shown by the following passage in the Jerusalem Talmud. Quoting, Why is it called the place or house of drawing? For that was the term for this ceremony and for the place where the water was taken up. Because from thence they shall draw the Holy Spirit as it is written, and you shall draw water with joy from the fountains of salvation. Now, the Holy Spirit is referred to in the New Testament frequently um, in terms of water. But specifically, Jesus had this long conversation with the woman at the well, speaking of living water, talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus, in John chapter 4, verse 10, spoke these words. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And so the Lord came on the scene saying, I'm the fulfillment of these wells of salvation that Isaiah had prophesied. The Jews had annually celebrated this prophetic promise, but they did not recognize in mass that Jesus came to fulfill this. These wells of salvation are the a reference alluding to the Messiah pouring out the living water of the Holy Spirit. Continuing back in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4, In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. So during this um, messianic era, the people of God will praise the Lord and proclaim his name and make it known among the Gentiles what he has done. Verse 5 is another exhortation to praise. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the world. And then it closes with a psalm-like exhortation to praise the Lord. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Now, I just want to wrap this up briefly. Prophetically, this all alludes to Messiah's reign. The Messiah is in view throughout the chapter. It was recognized by the Jewish sages to be a, a chapter that referred to the Messianic era. Wells of salvation are referred to, and Jesus spoke of wells of living water that would come out from him and uh, save mankind and touch mankind and spring forth in mankind. And the, the prophet Isaiah spoke that in that day, this would become known among the Gentiles. Friends, the Gentiles have embraced the reign of Messiah more than the Jewish people to date. But there will come a day when the Jewish people, along with the nations of the world, will embrace Jesus as the Messiah of God. There will come a day when the Jews and Gentiles alike will say, God is my salvation. Yahweh has become as Yahshua. He has become Jesus and Savior to me. So, Lord, we pray that you would hasten the day of the Lord, that you would hasten the Messianic kingdom, that you would hasten the time when the Messiah is in view, not only prophetically as one to come, but he's in view by the Jewish people as one who has come and who will come again. Let that be in our lifetimes, Lord. Return, Jesus. Your kingdom awaits. Your people are hungry for your return. Come now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.